Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, the other day I made a tap follower for my mill, a floating tap follower. And it worked really well, but it's got a few little, few little errors on it that I want to correct. So I'm going to make another one right now. Here it is. The springs are not quite strong enough to pull it back up. Uh, I'll resolve that. And I got a little wire tie on it holding the bottom of the springs. But, or a twist tie. I made it out of this thing. Uh, some of you may remember the uh, tapping drill holders I made out of these. I really like these. It's ER16. You can get a whole set of ER16 collars for about 10 bucks. And this tap holder is maybe six or seven dollars at most. I, I think I got them on Alibaba. Uh, I don't know if that's how you say it or not. Chinese website. I've seen them on Timu too. I've never bought them on Timu, but they might be pretty good. It's, it's something like this is not really that critical. But the ones I got before, I mean for the tap drills, these work good. Anyway, let's get started making this. Uh, before, before we get started though, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows about these cutoff tools that I got available. I've got several of these made up in the AXA and BXA. And hopefully my guided tap wrenches, I'll have some of them in stock. But this includes uh, everything you need. It just fits right on an AXA or a BXA tool post. And I've included an oil bottle in with it. Uh, it's a needle oiler that you put oil in just right where you're cutting. It works really well. Anyway, let's get started on this tap follower. Okay, what I'm going to change on this is I'm going to move this slot up about there, about another quarter inch, and probably put some pins in the bottom here, or maybe even some number 10 bolts to hook that spring on. The spring is, is about right, it's just not extended enough to work right. But first we've got to face off these. i got the stock cut to length. I'm going to face them both off and uh, then drill a hole through this three quarter inch. Well, some of you may have noticed I'm using a keyless chuck here. And I just had a problem with it. But the jaws are turning with the chuck body when you tighten it. So guess what? When you reverse, like I got this drill jammed in there, and I went to reverse my lathe, it loosened the chuck. So far, I'm not really pleased with this chuck. We'll see how it does on this. Okay, on my original design, I had it a slot with about one inch travel, which is total inch and a quarter full length, and about five eighths from the top. We're going to go about a quarter from the top. And this is not critical at all. Okay, I've got it centered on the one inch, and I'm going to, uh, I got it elevated from the bottom of the vise, and I'm just going to. Mill through the top and then go down through the bottom. Okay. Putting an eighth inch collet and drill. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do here yet. I think I'm just going to put a roll pin in there for that. We'll see. 
I'm going to drill a through hole about one eighth inch up just to hold those springs. I think what I'm going to do is braise a piece of wire in there and then bore it out. Okay, now I need to bore that out and create a socket for that to sit in. I guess I'll go about a quarter inch deep. How did I go over? It, it's not over enough to worry about. But I would have preferred a snug fit. I need to cut that off. And weld that in there. Oh, I made a mess of that. Something I've learned with TAG, and I didn't do it on this, and I should have. You purge the torch before you start welding. In other words, you get the gas flowing to the end. And I failed to do that. That's why I did that. Another issue is that collet chuck might be stainless which I really didn't think about till just now. It, it welded good on the last one though. But it did better on that second side and it won't require much to hold that. Okay, now we just need to position this bolt at the lower end of the slot. Actually two bolts. Well, I probably will have to bend those pins down a little bit. Hopefully they'll stay put in there. Maybe not. That's perfect. Let's try it out. They make a collet specifically for taps and the back of it is square that grips on that. But I've never had these slip on the tap. They may do it at some point, but if nothing else, it'll probably stop the tap from breaking if it slips.
Okay, let's see what this does. I think ideally I should move the belt on my mill. It's not overly fast, but running my mill this slow, I've not got a lot of torque, but it'll probably work. Here it goes. Yeah, I really should move the belt. But you can see right there, I did pretty good. Anyway, that about wraps it up. I think it's working good. Springs are a little stronger. By having it all the way up like that, it allows you, you to drop the tap and put a little force on it to get it started. Okay, just a reminder, these cutoff tools are available on my web store. I'll leave the links in the description below. Uh, I think I'll have some uh, guided tap wrenches too. Anyway, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe and uh, ring that bell. A little bit of squeaking goes away after the tool gets under load. Auto feed really does work better with this tool, as long as it's not too fast. I don't know what the limits are. The limits for my lathe are about one, one thousandths per chuck resolution. Here we go. Beautiful. Anyway, I'll put the links down below in the description to my web store. Appreciate you joining me. And remember the stock requests. I see them, but it's hard for me to reply to them, so keep checking back.